Javier well. Baez, the <laughs> former Met, the former uh, Chicago Cub, obviously winning the World Series with them. He will be signing a big contract with the Detroit Tigers, which means that Carlos Correa is still out there. Trevor Story is still out there. And the Cardinals still have one non-gold glove spot on their infield. I'm just, just pointing that out there for no apparent reason. Are you sure it's for no apparent reason? No, or is yeah, there just, something just, subliminal I mean, it's, inferred it's, no, it's there, sir? It's completely coincidental. Well, I'll say this. The Texas Rangers have won the offseason, lockout or not. I mean, in the last, what, 48, 72 to 48 hours, they have committed $561 million in guaranteed contracts to three players. Of course, the big fish, Corey Seager, 10 years, $325 million. Shortstop. Second baseman, Marcus, Marcus Simeon, seven years, $175 million. <clears throat> Excuse me. Starting pitcher, John Gray, four years at $56 million. Now, mind you, the Rangers finished 60 and 102. Believe it or not, that was not the worst record in baseball, but nothing to brag about. You lost 102 games. Well, that organization made up its mind. We're not going to lose 102 games next season. They go out and they open up the wallet. They had needs. They fill their needs. They have, they have shored up the middle of their infield at least for the next seven to 10 years with players in the prime of their careers. Good job and kudos to the Texas Rangers. Now the Mets, Max Scherzer, Three years, 140, I'm sorry, three years at 130 million. The Blue Jays, uh, they signed Kevin Gaussman, former Cy Young Award winner, five years, 110 million. The Mariners, you seldom hear about the Seattle Mariners in free agency. Well, they signed a left-handed pitcher, Robbie Ray, five years at $115 million. So, Action is going on all around baseball right now. And this flurry of free agent signings is taking the luster off of the winter meetings, provided there are some winter meetings. I, for one... What, yeah, well, wait, well, wait, well, hold on a second. What luster around the winter meetings? The, 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 it, it's happening. They're, they're going to they're gonna lock them out. I don't I, I, believe I, I, the lockout know, is going to sustain. And I know they're talking, you know, they're in conversations right now. All the all the baseball reporters are, are tweeting out, you know, that, that right now uh, there's seven owners in a room with 40 players trying to hash it out before, you know, we got 37 hours before the deadline uh, on Wednesday slash Friday, on uh, Thursday morning, excuse me. Um, there is no fanfare despite the fact that uh, these teams just want to get these deals in under the line. I mean, there, there, there's going to be a lockout. That, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. The, the question is, how long will the lockout last? I, I don't think. Through January. I. At least. I don't know. Logistically, because it, when you get into January, these teams have to start making arrangements to get, you know, to start getting down to the spring training sites, wherever they may be. So you got to get equipment moved. You got to find housing. And all of those things are time-consuming. It's not something you can just patch together. Now, I will say this. I would expect during the lockout, the front offices will work on the logistics as far as spring training and moving and that kind of thing. You're, they're not supposed to have any contact with players or uh, agents. Now, I have worked through a lockout in another professional sport. It's one of the weirdest things because in that partic the particular lockout I was a work worked through, rather, it was uh, the NBA lockout back in 1998, 90, 1999. And it was so weird. We could not even mention the players' names. So I don't know if baseball will get that extreme with this lockout, but I – would not expect it to last very long. There's just too much at stake as it is. If they don't work it out today, I would probably suspect by the middle of December, if not sooner, this thing will be resolved. I mean, yeah, it's going to get resolved. I mean, we're not we're not talking about games being caused here, but uh, I, I just think that 
the signings right now make people think this is a little bit more rosier than it is. I think it's going to, I think it's going to, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough um, through New Year's, through January, and probably into February. It wouldn't surprise just because, and it should be. Listen, it 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 it, it absolutely should be when you when you're looking at at what's the at what these franchises are able to offer, and then you look at what these other franchises refuse to offer. And I think uh, in, in the spirit of uh, former producer for the Hollywood Casino Press Box and here at 590, Brian Hoffman, it, 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 I need to you know, make the statement, there are no poverty franchises, just, team, just, poverty, team, just franchises that choose to have the look of a pover, impoverished team. And, and, so that, and, that, and that's the thing that baseball players should stand for, is that the way that some of these teams go, $41 million payrolls in 2021 is... And again, some people are gonna, you know, say this is spending other people's money and things like that. It's pathetic. It's 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 path- that's all it is. It's pathetic. It, it's swarmy. It's dirty. It, it's 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 low. It's slimy. It's slumlordish. You know, it, it's whatever you want to say. That's just what it is. You know, tell four, us how you really forty one million it. dollar payrolls were bottom of the barrel in the early two thousands. There are teams that are going to be paying their entire roster less than the Mets are pl- paying Max Scherzer, and sure, that's probably because the Mets are pay- overpaying Max Scherzer, but also it's because a bunch of be- because there's a bunch of cheapskates living in Pittsburgh, and and Oakland and things like that. It's just like that's a fact of the matter. It's it's, it's they're 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 being cheap because sports are a business when they're not, and and then they are when you want them to be. It's it's the weird owners love to play that game. And so Cohen and the Rangers can offer half a billion dollars across three players or two players, really, if you're the Rangers. But no, no, no. Some of us just can't make these things, these ends meet. You know, Max Scherzer's now signing for what the Cardinals were purchased for in the 90s. And, yeah, roughly. And, 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 you know, the economics have changed. The middle class is weirdly destroyed. And yet somehow we have teams that are going to feel payrolls and salary totals that are the Oakland A's from the Moneyball era. This is pathetic and it's because a bunch of millionaires think they can they can they because not only think they can get away with it and and so you know if you're the players fight like hell get take the lockout and then and then fight like hell if you're and and obviously the owners are just going to keep getting richer because that's how um this whole thing works but you know I say I say uh make some people uh make some people bleed. I, I will defend the Oakland A's somewhat, ha! somewhat. What? No, it's a, somewhat. It's a tr- the, the, the the team was bought for the guy by his mommy and his daddy, and he's been and he he's run it like he like he's this hard scrabble real estate guy who who made it good and just wants to bring a hometown team back. You know, it, it it's that the A's is the most agree is one of the most egregious ones ever because the media has tried to paint over it. If you have not set foot in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, you he wouldn't understand. Do, he could put money into it. He could literally. No, no. That place needs a match to money, it. He could literally put <laughs> money into it. The man's a billionaire, and his mommy and his daddy bought yeah. the team. That place is horrible. And so most of these teams now who have ballparks, they have development around those ballparks. We have it here. Uh, it's in Atlanta, you know, even in R- Chicago around Wrigley Field. They've built up everything. They've developed stuff around the ballpark. They do not have that luxury in Oakland. That 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 is the most dilapidated professional sports facility in the United States, bar none. So the A's get a pass just on that. Now, a billionaire is a billionaire, yes, but if you don't have a ballpark and you uh, – it's just – an ugly situation there in Oakland. But let's come home to St. Louis, where we have a pristine ballpark that has thriving development immediately around it. And as a fan of the Cardinals, you know, I'm taking off the radio guy's hat. I'm a fan here. It is difficult to watch these other teams go out and fill their needs and open up their checkbooks and, and get it done. And yet my team that I pull for, they haven't done anything. They've made a move. Um, some people are in favor of it. I, I'm just hopeful that's not the only move uh, they, they will make this offseason. But I'm afraid it very well may be 
uh, just, just the way they are structured. But I did want to ask you this. Uh, Fisher <laughs> right. is the son of Doris Fisher and Don Fisher, the co-founders of, of Gap Incorporated. Yes. After graduate school, he took a job for a real estate company that did business with his parents' company, The Gap. This is a joke. His estimated worth is $2.4 I don't care what his stadium's like. Put some damn money in your team, you lazy trust fund baby. Good Lord Almighty. This is John Mayer of the Giants all over again. Well, okay. Uh, trust we- Fund babies. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the local team. And, right, and, and in particular, we all know Max Scherzer is from St. Louis, and he signed a mega deal, which we all knew he would. We also all knew it, it had no chance of happening here in St. Louis. But now I'm seeing Cardinal fans, now that Scherzer has signed, well, that's too much, and he's not worth it. And I guarantee you, if the Cardinals had signed Max Scherzer, no one here would say that's too much. He's not worth it. They would be celebrating it. Oh, the local boy comes home, and this is the greatest thing. But because he signed elsewhere, it's not being received very well here in St. Louis. I, don't, I, I can't believe there's people who are taking it poorly. He wasn't going to sign with the Cardinals. It had no chance. I mean, not, I mean, whether you want to talk about the dollar figure, it's just he's 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 not. He's not a big fan of the people who are currently running this team based on the on their on their dealings in his last run of free agency. And that's they, one thing he and I have so in common. That's that's yeah, it wasn't gonna happen. Again, take away the and, and again, I think I think the Mets over I think the Mets overpaid a little bit of everybody. Um I think all the guys they've signed, Canna, uh, Marte, Scherzer, I think they all got a, a little bit bigger just because Cohen and the Mets are out for to send a message. Um, and you have to when your owner's a whiny Twitter baby. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm surprised there's people in St. Louis who, who are who have any issue with the, with the Max Scherzer contract. That seems odd to me. And you, when you consider the Mets, I mean, they pretty much the their general manager now. He's like their third or fourth choice. I mean, there has to be something going on. Obviously, when you have an owner who's loaded in the biggest media market in the country, has money to spend, a willingness to spend it, and yet you had guys turning down the general manager's job. And this is the guy they have now. He's like their third or fourth choice. He did come out smoking. That was a great great signing, uh, big signing. Uh, Now, they do have a nice one-two punch in their rotation. And we'll see, but I, I, it's just kind of frustrating to be in a town, a baseball town, the greatest baseball town in America (laughs) with the greatest, most intelligent baseball fans. And the team here just kind of sits on his hands and, you know, tries to convince us that these guys and their system are the greatest thing since, uh, sliced bread. Or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, something like that. Remains to be seen. Uh, I am not an optimist. Uh, I, we'll, we'll just see. But it's uh, it is interesting how it it just seems like a lot of people have taken it personally that Max Scherzer signed with the Mets. They just really are taking it personally, and I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Just fans are crazy. Well, we know that. They're the same people who are who, who who will tell you that that the Cardinals, you know, and the, and the DeWitts don't spend enough money or make enough big moves after <laughs> Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado in, in in two out of three years. I mean, fans are fans are crazy people. Well, I'm one of those crazy people. Because, You're crazy. Yeah, I am. Let me just kind of address. Those and they deals. just signed a really good number three pitcher, which again, you're not very hot. You're, you're you're pretty down about it overall. So I wouldn't be surprised that you're not a little bit more chipper. But overall, I don't know what people expect. Well, let's ridiculous. kind of back up that Paul Goldschmidt deal. It's a great deal. W- w- it is, but it took them about two three years to make it happen. And then they, they, well, but yeah, but who cares how long same it thing took, with Arenado? Who cares how long it took him to make? Ha- who cares also how long it took took him to make it happen? That's 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 a, that's a pointless thing to get okay. held up on. No, though. here's the thing. If you're going to make a deal, okay, so 
Goldsmith came in 2018. So we started hearing rumors about him coming to St. Louis as early as 2016. Well, they needed him in 2016. Why did you make the deal when you first because approached the Arizona? Diamondbacks still thought they had a chance to put a okay. team together in 2016. Same deal with Arenado. We heard three years about that deal. So, yeah, they made those deals, but it took them two, three years to make the deals. What happened to the days when you get on the phone and you make a deal in a day or two? So they did those deals, yes, but I, I, it's just disappointing, really, to see these other teams make these moves, fill their needs, and make headlines. And we sign a 45 and 48 pitcher with a career 4.82 ERA, and we are supposed to be excited find me, about Find it. me how many times <laughs> supposed to be excited the winner it. of free agency and the winner of the offseason is the winner at the end of the season. It's very rarely, it very rarely connects to those two things because team building is rarely in any sport ever about the moves you make in free agency, and it's rarely ever about making the biggest moves. Um, if Corey Seager misses 40 games, which he has done a lot in his career, if Marcus Simeon continues to be a barely above average player uh, by OPS plus, then the Rangers aren't going to be streaming off towards a hundred wins or anything like that, despite having an outrageously high payroll. And they very easily could win the off season and lose the regular season, which we've seen multiple times across baseball and other sports. And so and on, the other, on the other hand, the Cardinals will probably still win 88 to 93 games and, be, and go to, be in the playoff Go spot, to the wild card game. Be in the game, playoff conversation. Get eliminated. The yeah, get eliminated. And we'll be watching. Uh, it's better Again, it's better It's better than catching two or three injuries on a huge payroll and, and, and winning 74 games. Like a very, like has happened to teams like the Rangers multiple times when they've made big moves like this. Okay. Francisco Lindor is working out really well right now in New York, isn't he? It's working out for him on uh, the well, first yeah, to the fifth. Him, yeah, I'm not saying it's not going to work <laughs> yeah. out for Corey Seager and yeah. Marcus Simeon. Yeah. You know, when it comes to their bank accounts, I'm talking about on the field with the New York Rain or, or uh, Texas Rangers. Here's the deal: the Rangers can clearly go to their fan base and say, "Hey, we tried, man. We 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 did this. Now it didn't work out, but we tried." And so, I'm just waiting on the Cardinals to tell good. us, the fans, we're trying. And show us. This is the show me state, right? Well, show us you're trying. A signing a guy. <laughs> There's one day in the last ten years in Cardinals baseball where they where you haven't where you've known the Cardinals don't matter. It's it's literally like a week actually of like how many actual days during at any point in in a baseball season you thought the Cardinals are not in it at all. That's the amount of time you've had to spend over the over the last decade thinking about the Cardinals being completely out of it. They they don't. This is the show me state. They've shown it. They don't need to say anything because they've shown it. Right. Here's what they've shown us. A consistent we will fill the we will fill the team yes. competitively enough where it will win games that will draw people to the ballpark and those who don't go to the ballpark they'll they'll park at Ballpark Village <laughs> and then those who you know who are well healed. They can rent those three, four thousand dollar a month apartments in one carton away, which they now have a waiting list, and then they have that Lowe's hotel. So as long as they can draw people to the complex with a competitive team, that's what they want. And now, that's it, and that's all you should expect from from, from ownership. That's I mean, if if you if you if they're doing that, then they're doing their jobs as owners, and you should support them like you would support this, uh, a business that that's doing a solid job. And the ownership should be honest. Hey, listen, they we're are. not really trying to win. Oh, we just want to put a competitive team, and we, we're not trying to win a World Series. We just want to, you know, we want to put a team together that's entertaining, that you will come to the ballpark, spend your money, go to Ballpark Village, spend your money. And again, I know, yeah. you, I know you want to say that with a negative bent, but in, in a conversation that literally started with talking about how there are – 10 to 12, sometimes even 15 owners who are fine with their team not even trying to be competitive for multiple seasons in a row. I understand why if you just say, well, that's all the Cardinals are doing is trying to be competitive. No, no, no. They want to be competitive because they know that if they can constantly be an 85 to 90 win team every 
couple years if they just have that last little oomph they can go from 90 to 100 and be a World Series yeah. caliber team. And that's the expectation. The expectation shouldn't be we should win a World Series every single year. That's not realistic. We should, well, you're not the you Yankees and you're not the Dodgers. You, well, can't, you, can't they finan- don't. you can't financially plan a team every year, look at every other squad in the NL and say, we will be the best team in the NL and a World Series contender this year. That's not realistic. That's just, that's just not realistic. If you talk with the folks in the Yankees front office, they're they'll not, tell you they're not. The we want to win the World Series. The Cardinals are not the Yankees. The Cardinals are not the Dodgers. They are. There is a tier above them because those teams have literally all the money on God's green earth to spend, and they will spend it. And that's why the Dodgers finally won. 